Welcome to the SEI podcast series, a production of the Carnegie Mellon University Software Engineering Institute. The SEI is a federally funded research and development center sponsored by the U.S. Department of Defense and operated by Carnegie Mellon University. A transcript of today's podcast is posted on the SEI website at sei.cmu.edu slash podcast. My name is Suzanne Miller. I'm a principal researcher here at the SEI, and today I'm pleased to introduce you to Don Firesmith, who is an SEI principal engineer whose current work focuses on software and systems testing, current and much past work as well. He's been in this business a long time. Today we're going to talk about a taxonomy of testing types that Don has recently created. But first, a little bit about him, who has been a, and he has been a frequent guest on our show, so I apologize if you've heard this before. At the SEI, Don provides practical guidance with regard to requirements engineering, system and software architectures, and testing to help program offices acquire software-intensive systems. He also develops and maintains new technologies, such as methods for engineering safety and security requirements, as well as assessing the quality of systems requirements and architectures. He is also the author of countless journal articles on software and systems engineering, as well as seven technical books, including most recently, Common Software and System Testing Pitfalls, How to Prevent and Mitigate Them, Descriptions, Symptoms, Consequences, Causes, and Recommendations. Quite thorough. Don, thank you for joining us today. Very happy to be here. So let's start off by talking briefly about the current state of software and system testing as you observe it, and particularly in terms of different types of testing. What do you observe and what drove the need for a taxonomy as far as you're concerned? Well. What I see uh, often is that the uh, projects out there, well, they'll document what their test plans are, test strategies, mm -hmm. uh, in some kind of document up front. And when you review those to see what they're planning on doing, typically only a very small number of different types of testing are even mentioned. Unit testing, integration testing, system testing, and so on. And yet, if you go out into the test community, the, the literature, the, uh, the training courses, the books, the articles, there are literally hundreds of different ways sure. of doing testing. And it just became very obvious uh, that the uh, test planning was incomplete. And it's a case of out of sight, out of mind. If you don't uh, actually plan on doing a certain kind of testing, sure. odds are that testing is just If you don't plan on doing place. load testing, you're not going to do load testing. Exactly. So I uh, decided uh, that it would be a good idea to actually organize the information about the different kinds of testing okay. because I could not find any one good source that had pretty much all of the different types of testing in, in one place. There are good books and things like sure. that. but nothing that really seemed comprehensive and so I decided to start off by just coming up with a list of testing types. Okay and so tell us about that. Um, how did you go about finding all those test types and what did you find when you when you went looking for different test types? A lot of it came you know from past experience but uh, once again there are tons of articles, blog entries, um, books, there are organizations that certify testers and they have their own training materials for example. So there really truly is a wealth of material out there and the internet is naturally a great place sure. to find some of this uh, information. Um, and like I said I started off with just a list and definitions to go along with the list. But it didn't take very long before there were just far too many different kinds of testing to, to have on the list. You get completely overwhelmed. So I realized what we needed was some kind of taxonomy, some kind of hierarchy, some, some way some to way organize organizing. and structure mm -hmm. them so that similar testing you know, types were next to each other, if you will, and, and you could find things easily. And also make decisions. If, if I have a whole group of tests that are related, I can maybe decide that I do want to use this one, but I don't want to use those two, or I want to use all three. So it, it allows me to make more informed decisions as a test planner. Absolutely. And it's not just whether I'm going to use this type or that type. It may very well be that this type of testing makes imminent sense 
for this functionality or for this part of your right. system, but it's not cost effective, it doesn't make sense to use it any place else. Sure. Or I may not have the test equipment to use this testing method, but here's another one that's kind of like it that I've never tried before that doesn't use mm -hmm. as much test equipment or the same test equipment. So I can see where those would be cases where I would want to use a taxonomy to help me in that planning function. And it's not just the people who are doing the test planning. Uh, the government uh, uh, people with oversight of uh, system development programs, when they're looking at a contractor's test program, mm -hmm. it would help them to figure out, well, how complete is this test program? Are there any things that are obvious that we know should right. be done that aren't being done? Or are there particular things related to our problem that we know should be done that aren't typical? So you mm -hmm. may write a, a perfectly good software-based test plan, but it may not address particular issues that this customer has. Right. Uh, the idea of load testing, performance testing, capacity testing. Um, if you have safety critical software, then safety related testing sure. is important. Uh, robustness testing, security is another issue, whether it's penetration testing or any of a number of different kinds of testing types associated right. with security. Now that seems to be a growing area more than, than many in today's world. Absolutely. So uh, give us an example of the taxonomy. Give us a little bit of help. We've got some graphics here. Uh, that you brought today that, that help us to, to go through and understand the taxonomy. So okay. why don't you tell us about those? Well, if you look at the first graphic, what you'll see is that there's a lot of different kinds of methods for doing verification validation. Uh, there's testing, mm -hmm. but there's also various evaluation uh, kinds of approaches, analysis, demonstration, sure. and so on. And the first thing uh, I want to just make clear is this taxonomy doesn't cover everything. It only covers the testing, the part that's so needed. So that gray box is the test and, and all the other things really are excluded from this taxonomy. There may be exactly. future ones, but yeah. this is the test taxonomy. Or if there was a bigger taxonomy, we're talking sure. about that subtree okay. all right. with regard to testing. And then where do we go from there? Okay, if you look at the second graphic, what you'll see is essentially the top three levels of the taxonomy. On the left-hand side, we have all of the different types of testing, if you will, test types. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the next uh, column over, you'll see that all of these different test types have been organized, categorized, in accordance to what are historically known as the five uh, W's and two H's. In other words... So these are the questions that those kinds of tests answer. Exactly. There would be, you know, what kind of thing is getting tested, so the what question. When tests, you know, when does the testing take place? Why tests? Why are you doing the testing? What are you trying to get out of it? Who tests? Okay, who's doing the testing? What organizations, what people, mm -hmm. what roles? Uh, where are the tests taking place? Um, so that gives you the five um, W's. And then uh, you have the two H's. How is the testing taking place? And how well, it's not so much how well the testing has to take place, but testing to see how well the object under test is performing. Oh, okay. It. So this would be where you'd have your qualities. Uh, your Quality safety, attributes. Security, sure. exactly. Okay. And so that, so from there, you've got a set of test types that f help you to answer those questions. Right. Um, and then on the third graphic, it looks like we've got something that goes, goes down a little farther. Yeah, so for example, if you look at the upper right-hand corner of graphic number two, under what tests you see object under uh, test based mm -hmm. test types. And then if you look at graphic number three, that expands that one box to show all of the different kinds of uh, testing that would fit primarily under okay. that. So for example, if we're talking about what is being tested, you could have models that are being tested, executable models. You can be testing hardware, mm -hmm. you can be testing software, you can be testing systems, including systems of systems, you can be testing data centers, and you can be testing tools and in, uh, okay. environments, both development environments and test environments. So 
once again, you just t keep taking the tree and you can break the branches into smaller and smaller branches until at the very end you get the specific concrete right. types of testing that uh, take place here. And so, for example, uh, I've mentioned at the very beginning that uh, we talk about in software, unit testing, mm -hmm. integration testing, I see system those here. testing. Well, yeah, those happen to be three leaves on one branch of a very large tree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And things like model testing, I know that that's an area that actually gets forgotten quite a bit, is we don't actually, we, we, we create models, but we don't actually test to see whether the model is valid. Right. And we move along and test the results of the model, but we don't actually verify that the model is correct. So that's that's nice to see that being included there. Yes, yeah, so there's a lot of ways to evaluate the models. Uh, dynamic and static analysis, as I said, are out of scope mm -hmm. of this taxonomy. And they definitely help make sure that the model has good quality before you implement from it. But many of these models are executable now. Exactly. And if you don't actually take advantage of executing the model, then you're not going to know if it actually gives the result that's expected. You can do exactly the same kind of testing for models mm -hmm. as you do for software. And in some sense, these models can be thought of as being software at just that much higher of a level mm -hmm. of abstraction. So it's really no different. You have test cases, and you, you put the model in a pretest state, you execute the model, and you see if the model's behavior matches what you right. expect. Right, right. And that's the same as what we do with software and system tests of other types as well. Exactly. So have you used this in customer settings yet? What are you expecting if you haven't? What are you hoping to see happen when this, this kind of a taxonomy is used in a customer setting? Uh, this is sort of, you know, brand new as we speak right now. I'm in the process of formalizing it and getting it out there. Uh, essentially, the way I envision it being used, one is as, if you will, a checklist or a check mm -hmm. hierarchy for when people are doing the... Uh, the planning of the sure. testing programs. Do we need to deal with these kinds yeah. of testing and be explicit sure, about that? Yeah, let's make sure that nothing accidentally falls through the crack. Mm -hmm. If we decide not to do a certain type of testing, it's because we thought about it and mm -hmm. made that decision, not because we forgot it even existed. Right. Uh, then, uh, as I said, uh, if your responsibility is oversight of some organization that's doing the testing as part of the development for you, then once again, now it can be used as a checklist to make sure that you're looking for everything mm -hmm. and seeing whether or okay. not the developer is doing everything that they need to do. Uh, this can also be used uh, from a training standpoint. You can almost think of each one of these types of testing as being very similar to a a testing pattern in some sense because okay. it's a way of solving a problem in a specific context, mm -hmm. just like a pattern is. And so one of the things that you can do is you can learn about the different kinds of testing by learning the taxonomy, just like you can learn how to use different a pattern design languages, patterns. Okay. Uh, you know, by looking, learning the patterns that make it up. So it, it can be a training thing. And also like uh, with pattern languages and patterns, there's a, we're giving names, if you will, to the different kinds of mm -hmm. testing. Now, one of the problems that we have as a testing community is there's a lot of synonyms, mm. near synonyms, acronyms, where the same acronym means two different things. One of the things I'm hoping to do is to have this become sort of the official, if you will, structure so that if you use a term and I use a term, we have not only referring to the same thing in the same taxonomy, but you can also then turn it into an ontology. In other words, it's not just the pretty pictures. Right. It's the data, the information behind the pictures, the definitions. The meaning. The meanings of the things mm -hmm. and how they relate to each other. Okay. And that may involve a standards effort at some future date. This may be a seed for that of course. Uh, kind of a standards effort. I, IEEE and other mm -hmm. kinds of standards bodies will often take these kinds of things up. So um, how can our readers and listeners access the taxonomy? I know you have several different uh, things coming up, so why don't you tell us about upcoming events and products related to this? Okay, uh, 
Well, we are going to have a, a webinar, half-day webinar coming up uh, that I'm, we'll, uh, put we'll, in a, we'll we'll a publish. link to that. We'll publish a link to that where I will go through all of the different uh, parts of the okay. taxonomy. Okay, so that's an education activity. So that's an education activity. I will be speaking mm -hmm. on this uh, topic at the uh, FAA's Verification Validation Summit coming okay. up. Uh, next month in uh, Atlantic City, New Jersey. I will also be doing a tutorial, half-day tutorial on it at our Software Solutions Conference uh, here in November. And that'll be in the D.C. area? Yep. Yeah. And then uh, the last thing is I'm actually turning this into a book. Uh, this was going to be added to my uh, Pitfalls book, but it became much too large. And so uh, I am in the process right okay. now of completing the manuscript for the first, you know, version of this. Excellent. Excellent. So we will include li uh, links to all of these resources and events in our transcript as they become available. So you'll be able to keep up with Don. I want to thank you once again to, uh, to Don and also to our listeners and viewers for joining us today. Uh, this podcast is available on the SEI website at sei.cmu.edu slash podcasts and on Carnegie Mellon's iTunes U site. As always, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to email us at info at sei.cmu.edu. Thank you.